when my father returned to our area of the ghetto, he saw that everything was empty, that there was nobody home. And he ran to Umschlagplatz because he knew from the past that th this is where people were taken. And he saw huge numbers of women and children being forced onto cattle cars. And he tried to get in there because he told me many years later that whatever was going to happen to me and to my mother, he wanted to be there with us. Whatever was going to happen to us, he wanted to happen to him. And they wouldn't let him. They weren't looking for men at that time. They, were, they only wanted women and children. They threatened him at gunpoint and told him that they would shoot him point blank if he didn't get out of there. But before he ran to Umschlagplatz, he, went, he ran down to the cellar and he called Regina, my mother's cousin. And she ran to, to Umschlagplatz. And because she was a woman, maybe, or because she was wearing a prison uniform, prison guard uniform, she somehow slipped in and got there just in the nick of time. And she looked around frantically, looking to see if she could see anybody. Her mother and her sister were with us, and my mother was not only her cousin, but also her best friend, her closest friend. And just as she got there, she looked around and she saw that my mother, holding me in her arms, I was two years old, was being forced onto one of the cattle cars, pushed into the cattle car. And she ran to that cattle car, and she started to scream at the top of her lungs that I was her child and that my mother was only babysitting for me. And I can't explain this because it makes, it's, it's hard to believe under those circumstances. But for some miraculous reason, my mother was allowed to pass me hand to hand, hand to hand, and I was thrown off that car into Regina's arms. And the doors of the cattle car closed. And eventually that train and hundreds of other trains like it pulled away and the people on those trains were never heard from again. And this, I think, is the most dramatic part of my story because it is something that haunts me to this day. Having children of my own and now grandchildren of my own, uh, I can't imagine what that must have been like for my mother to do the absolute opposite of what instinct called her to do. She must have wanted to hold me close to protect me with her own life, with her own body, as I would do for my children, as you would do for your children. But instead, she had to do the exact opposite, and she didn't have time to consider it. She didn't have time to think, should I do this, should I not? She had to make an, an instant decision 